No, I've never called myself a gardener. I feel like traditional gardeners would just be offended by how clean my hands stay. But by the definition of the word, yeah, I, I, I guess I am a gardener. And by the definition of the word, this would definitely be a garden. I'm hoping people realize that vertical farming, aeroponic farming, isn't just a thing of the future. That is very much here. It's very much now. Welcome to Humble Grove. So when my wife and I retired our 20-foot travel trailer to the top of our driveway here in the Rocky Mountains, I jumped on the opportunity to turn the whole thing into a huge vertical garden. I mean, I've really been into gardening and growing things for a while now, not with a ton of success, but uh, that's what I'm really excited about with this opportunity to do this with the channel, with you guys, so that I can learn, I can share what I'm learning with you, you can try what I'm doing at home. We all get to experience the beauty of gardening uh, all year round, because right now it's about 28 degrees outside and it's 67 degrees in here. So let me take you guys on a tour, show you the gardens. There are gonna be five gardens in total on this RV. Right now I have three growing and, well, technically four. Technically four and technically six. Okay, let me, let me say that again. So there are gonna be six gardens on this RV growing and right now I have four. Uh, so let me show you where we're at. I'll take you through this as a plant would grow. So let's start with the seedlings. So the plants start off here in my retired light box. I just threw a couple grow lights in there. It seals up nicely, keeps it humid. And right now I have, you know, a bunch of lettuce, uh, some tomatoes, all of my herbs and spices to go to the herb garden. Um, so once those have grown up enough, I take them over here to my cloner. This is really just, I like kind of refer to it as the fogger garden because it's not just a cloner. What I've realized is the, the, the gentleness of the fog on the roots is really great for prepping root systems to go into another one of the gardens. So first it starts off in the nursery in the, in the retired light box. Then it moves over to the fogger garden, which is actually the water tank for the RV that I just made into this cloner. Um, and from there, once the roots are big and ready to go, then it moves into one of the other gardens. So let's go there. The first one, and the one that's grown out by far the most here, is the vertical tower garden. And this is also the only garden on the RV that I didn't build out myself. This one's made by Juice Plus, but it gives me a really, really good opportunity to observe, see what works, emulate that, and try to design a garden that's much, much more reasonably priced and, uh, and can perform just as well, if not better in the Juice Plus Tower Garden. So, the Tower Garden is by far the biggest garden on here, so it's gonna house all my vine trellis plants like cucumbers, tomatoes, I have sugar snap peas, uh, cantaloupe, any, any other melon, zucchini, regular beans. Um, I have a few random things on here right now like cilantro and dill. Uh, I, they were just ready to go and I didn't have anywhere to put them. So, all right, now the other gardens. Over here, I have the herb garden, which you guys saw the herbs growing. That's why they're not in here, but once they're ready to go, you better believe they're gonna be in here first thing. I have room in here for 10 herbs, and this is a fog punic garden setup. So the way this works is the bottom reservoir is watertight, and that is holding the nutrient solution. It also has a fogger that's floating in it, and that creates fog on a timer. And then I have a fan that blows air in and up to the reservoir which is holding the roots and the plants. So up top here, you can see the fog just pouring in and that pours in. And the only way I could get it to pour in was by drilling little holes in the top because obviously this is airtight and I would need air to be moving. So this does, this does add a little humidity to the air here, but we're in Colorado, we're at about 7,000 feet. It's very dry, so that humidity is really welcome. And it's a really cool garden. I'm super excited to get it going. Um, Let's move over to the leafy green garden. So in here, this is, this is, so if you're a leafy green, like uh, kale, romaine, spinach, bib lettuce, what's, the, what's that one, cabbage, then you're gonna go back here in the leafy green garden. This is, used to be the bathroom. Um, 
and there are two tower gardens in here now. The first one is a very, very similar design to the, the um, Juice Plus tower garden behind me as to where there's a pump in the bottom here that just pumps water up to the top and then trickles the water down so that the roots just get driplets of water. It's called a drip system. Next to that, this arch is a fog punic tower garden. Um, the fog is made in this red reservoir here in the middle and then it's pumped through the arch. This one I had to drill holes in also to keep the air moving so it too keeps humidity in the bathroom which is good because like I said, we're in Colorado and even with all that, it's still 42% air humidity in here and says it's dry. So I need to get even more humidity in here. Okay. All right, now those are the three gardens that I have built right now. Let me show you the two that I'm gonna be working on very shortly. This closet behind me, this is gonna be the cannabis closet. It's where I'm gonna be growing my arijuana. <laughs> get it? It's, it's uh, aeroponic marijuana, so it's aerog <clears throat> Yeah, I'm gonna be growing weed in here. It's gonna be really cool. Obviously, you're allowed to in Colorado. It's totally legal, so I don't wanna say anything in the comments, please. We're allowed to have, I believe, 12 plants or something like that, but I honestly don't even know the limit because I'm not gonna get anywhere near that. I plan on growing one, maybe two juicy plants here in this closet. Alongside of my best friend, Eric. He's gonna be growing them, and he has been growing uh, cannabis in his basement for I think the better part of a year now, maybe even over that. He's had quite a few successful harvests and I'm really excited to kind of apprentice under him. Uh, I know it's gonna be very different using an aeroponic setup, but he's had a lot of successful harvests in soil. So I get to learn from him and then share it with you guys as well in a whole uh, Aerojuana series that I'm gonna do. Okay, then over here, I'm gonna remove the fridge. I think we're gonna sell that on Craigslist and instead I'm gonna build a big bush garden and I'm gonna put blueberries in there. Blueberries are really picky and they require a very acidic pH that other plants don't even get near. So I'm gonna try to, I'm just gonna grow them by themselves and let them take over this whole area because our my family loves blueberries. My son Grayson's addicted to them. So I went to fetus addiction without breaking the bank. Next to the fridge is where I mix all my chemicals. This is where I keep track of everything. You know, I feel like it's really important to um, have a garden log and keep track of all the chemicals that you're putting in everything just so that you know and when you've cleaned everything, you know, I, organization is kind of key. I really think it helps to run into less issues or at least be able to move through the issues better when you're organized. So it's really important to me to keep a garden log and keep everything written down. Now, if you're like some people I know, you might be saying, why? Why are you doing all this? It seems like a lot of work to grow some food. Well, I mean, gardening in general, I feel like is a lot of work to grow some food. Um, but it's really not. Once I've built the whole setup, it's really kind of runs itself. There's not that much that I actually have to do. And the big reason I'm doing it is, truthfully, the reason I'm doing it is for the passion of doing it. I fell in love with gardening about two years ago um, during COVID and it was really my therapy watching my plants grow and it became an addiction and here we are. Um, my family also eats completely plant-based. So we are a very produce heavy family and it seems like lately um, produce has just skyrocketed. Our, our bills are all going up and what we're paying on food is tripling it seems like. So the expense that I put into building all of this out is really gonna pay for itself very quickly and what we're gonna save in uh, our grocery bills. I mean, that enough was reason for me to, to build a garden in something, whether it be like in our basement or in our house even, to build a big garden that could sustain or at least partially sustain our family. Um, but really uh, sharing my passion for vertical farming, for aeroponics, with the world is is my main goal in doing all of this. I I believe that aeroponic farming is a a truly revolutionary idea that is picking up traction. People need to see how easy it is. People need to see how effective it is. People need to see how we can change the face of agriculture. If more and more farms start implementing vertical farming or aeroponics. This garden, right now, uh, I'm set up to have about 85, I'm sorry, about 95 plants growing next week. Once I get the other gardens going and I'm at my maximum, I'm, I'm hoping to hit well over 100 plants in here. Now, if this was a soil garden, 100 plants would require 
far more space than just, what is this, 20, 20 feet by eight feet? Two times eight, 60, 160 square feet. And that doesn't include the wall. So really I'm probably only working with about 110 square feet. So I'm gonna be dropping videos on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Make sure you're subscribed. I really, really look forward to reading comments, to building the community here, and um, sharing with each other as we grow. So let's grow together.